what's maybe some advice you'd give to the mothers who, so sorry, the women who want to become mothers and who maybe want to avoid some of the obstacles or maybe some of the challenges that a lot of young mothers experience? Yeah, that's such a big question, um, but I love it and I'm here for it. I think the thing that I would tell new moms and moms to be, moms in waiting, perhaps, as many of us were, is it supposed to be hard? And that's okay. But it's not hard forever. And that asking for help is the single best thing that you can do. Because many of us were brought up to think that it would be seen as weakness or judged or we're comparing with other moms that we don't see openly asking for help. So even if help is there and available, we're resistant to it. And we certainly wouldn't reach out and ask, you know, many of the women I work with are like that. It's a pride almost, or it's a perfectionism of, well, they won't do it exactly the way I'm going to do it. So I'll just do it. Right. Um, Whether that be, you know, the grandmother changing the diaper or the husband mixing the bottle or like whatever the help is available sometimes if we're lucky Um, and we, we don't reach out and take it. And for me personally, I remember, and I just, if this helps one person, I remember thinking more about the person who was helping and it was like, I had to take care of them and their feelings. And I was, I was trying to make that okay. Like I was feeling guilty for them helping me. So I was taking that on and it wasn't worth in my mind at the time. Keep in mind, I also had pretty bad postpartum depression. So nothing was really right in my mind at the time. But I worried about the uh, the person helping me. And I didn't realize that they were offering to help me because they loved me and they wanted to help me. Maybe they didn't want to deal with the screaming baby when I was going to have a, a nap, but they wanted to do that for me. And they would not have done that or offered or won't do it again if it wasn't something that they wanted to do for the relationship with that child or for their relationship with me. And so understanding that it's going to be hard, but you can't do it by yourself. And if you don't have support in place in the form of mom friends or friends who are reliable to help you or sisters or neighbors or someone, parents who can help you, start early to develop those and be creative in how you build a village. It doesn't have to all be in person. It can be a mix of virtual There's lots of resources. If you're listening to this podcast from somewhere where you have the internet and maybe a cell phone to listen on it, I'd be willing to bet that there are resources in your community that are available, whether for free or for charge, but get get curious uh, and just realize that the only way through it is through it, basically. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's going to be difficult, ladies. It's going to be tough, moms. But that is okay because it's supposed to be. It's a yeah, it is supposed to be. Um, and it's normal for it to be hard. But also recognize our limits. It's right if raising a baby was supposed to be a one person thing, it wouldn't take two people to make the baby. You know what I mean? Like it, it's not supposed to be a solo job. So doing it solo, of course it's gonna be harder. Of course it is. Yeah, and that's where I think some of the, the the struggle is. Like when I look at all the like my friends who are now interesting enough. Now, now you've got me reflecting, Jill. <laughs> now, as I, I was as I look back, most of my friends now, let's say the last couple of years, are 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 all in either long term relationships or they're married. And now that I think about, it, I don't have a lot of single friends that I speak to. It's interesting how life changes you right. after you know, right? And I look at the women who have children, they went through something similar. Maybe they may have started off as like a solo parent, as you mentioned, because maybe the other person was away for whatever the reason of work or otherwise. But as the child got older and as they grew into their motherhood and and into that role, all of a sudden, everyone around them had kids or mothers. And I think maybe naturally, to your point, how we talked about the support system, maybe naturally, a lot of times they just gravitated towards it because then they can bounce off ideas or they can at least observe. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes watching is like a teacher in itself. Okay. Jill, Jill raised her child this way. I thought about that, but I wasn't really comfortable doing it, but she looked like it was the best advice ever because look at her children. They responded so well. Let me try that 
at home. Um, do you experience, did you experience maybe um, the power of observation and seeing other mothers in the quote unquote wild <laughs> doing what it is that they do, but doing it in a way that was okay. I feel a little bit more inspired today. I feel a bit more motivated. I know that I can do this because I see other mothers doing that. Yes. Two things on that. Um, the first thing is that it can actually be that, or it could go the opposite way. We could observe behaviors and ways of parenting that we didn't know we didn't want to do in our communities. And that's a good reminder for us to say like, oh, right, I have to be conscious of the way I'm parenting because I don't like that just as much as, oh, yes, that's a fantastic idea. I'm going to try it. But even separately from that, I feel like this generation, I know we were just like tooting technology's horn a minute ago, but we are in this weird vortex where we have access to so much information, um, not only to be getting parenting advice from podcasts and books, um, but Instagram accounts, we're seeing how our friends, like we see videos, we see lots of people around in our daily lives. There is so much input coming in it's almost hard to decipher what you want to do in your parenting because again, we're brought up to be, well, we want to be the perfect parent. We want to do it right. Of course we do. We want to do our best job. But when we're having conflicting messages, because our best friend is, is doing something one way and it seems to really work for her kids, but the parenting expert over here is saying to do something different. And you can see the validity in that too. It all circles back to that one core principle of like, you have to personalize it. So keeping in mind as you're moving through your life and observing that trying some, like keeping an open mind and trying different things that resonate with you is absolutely the best way to go, but not being attached to the outcome. Because if you think, oh, that's a really great way that my friend did, I'd like to try that, but it doesn't work for your, your kid. You can always come back and try it again later, or you can ditch it and say, oh, didn't work, but not being attached to, oh, it works for them. It should work for me. Um, and also recognizing when we're in this comparison mode, which is so hard. Honestly, I think tech, like social media is a, is a thing that is, is a double edged sword because we can use it to get inspired. We can use it to see what other people are doing. We can use it to learn and grow, but much of the time it's also feeding our, our inner critic and our, you know, inadequacy and stories we're telling ourselves, oh, that person's done it that way. Look, there's no peanut butter in that girl shirt. Oh, she's allowed to brush her kid's hair. I can't even get near mine. I'm cutting out dreadlocks. Like it's, it's so wild that we still, even though we know we are smart, educated people. And in our generation, we grew up before internet. So we really know that not everything is real, um, but we still fall into this comparison. So I just... I always like to point that out and and have moms sort of snap out at, throughout the day if they can recognize that they're in this comparison, whether it be social or with their real friends, because that's a real thing too. Yeah, mothers, fathers, and everyone else is one video. 